All right, so key point to get here is this, is that <coughs> serverless upstream, when it is put into a synchronous mode by calling set right listener, it quacks like a string, it walks like a string, but it's not a string anymore. Why is that? Because the only single semantic assumption of an output stream is that output right is blocking. And in the servlet API, they just said, oh, who cares? <laughs> and they just turned that method, which is blocking by semantic, into something different, which is non-blocking anymore, right? Plus, they forgot a couple of API. For example, have you ever wrapped a response object by wrapping the output stream because you wanted to buffer the output and then write something else, like a decorator, like imagine a you know tiles decorator. If you remember the struts times or something like that, they don't work anymore because there's no way for filter to ask to the output stream, are you synchronous? Yes or no? There's no API. So basically, they say, well, uh, I don't know what to do now. It is, can I do blocking calls? I have no idea because I don't know where this call will end up and what the server will do. You know, maybe someone in the middle will call set right listener, um, and I have no idea. So it's going to be really complicated. I mean, you start writing, wrapping the response, wrapping set right listener. You know, setting a flag. It's it's going to be really complicated. But the experience that we have in the Jerry project is that, for example, we had a gzip automatic filter that was you know, configurable and would say, OK, when you write stuff and there are the right conditions, we can gzip the, the stuff for you. And that was implemented as a server filter, like a standard one. It was even portable. You can take the jetty uh, gzip server filter and deploy it to Tomcat, and it would work. Right now, there's no way whatsoever to write a gzip uh, filter in server 3.1 that is going to work with the synchronous API. So much so that both the Tomcat project and us, the Jelly project, had to, to write a custom component that plugs in directly into the Tomcat API and the Jelly API, and it's not standard, it's not portable anymore. But we need to do this because there's no other way. Isn't this fun? Yeah. We haven't even touch the read side of it, because <laughs> we have a synchronous read as well, right? So asynchronous reads are very, very similar. Um, you get the input stream, you have this new method set read listener this time. It has a couple of methods as well, but the most important is this one on data available that gets called by the container when you can actually read stuff, right? So if you have a slow client, the slow client can send you a bunch of bytes, which you can read, then you would, you know, in the old server three zero, you would block until the client sends more data, right? Here, um, no, you you do a read, then you return, you go back, and then the container knows when there is more data and calls on data available for you again, right? Very similar to on write possible, you know, similar concept. Again, uh, very cool API. It's iterative. While it's ready and it's not finished, read some. If we read something, let's assume we this is a blocking API. Um, you know, it doesn't fly, but just for the sake of the example, we write it all, and then we check if we are finished, and then if we are, uh, we just complete the response. Otherwise, we're not finished. We loop. Are we ready? Can we read some more? We're not finished. Read some more. Store is ready. Read some more. Store is ready. Read some more. Store is ready. Is finished. Complete. Okay, again, iterative, no callback hell, uh, no, no issues. Normal reads are very fast, slow reads, um, you know, pay a little bit of, um, of uh, bottleneck, I mean, a new thread will be allocated to call on data available, uh, but, you know, it, it's okay, it's a slow client anyway, so it deserves to be treated badly. So, um, all right, so I think I got it from the previous part. So it's a while loop where I test for is ready and uh, I do just one read inside the loop. That's, that's the pattern that I want, right? It was the same pattern for the writes. And then I store this guy and, uh, and then I just loop. Okay, what, what's the problem here? The problem is that is ready returns true even when we are at end of file. So here, what happens would be, oh, we read it all, 
Um, we read more, we you know, fill, this buffer is now being filled. So here we return minus one, but we don't test for the return value of read. So we just write this buffer. And then we loop around and say, wow, ah, I'm ready. <laughs> so let's write uh, read a little bit more, but you don't read. So you have this empty buffer, like a, a thousands of zeros into this buffer, and you just write in zeros, 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 zero, and storing them all, right? So what you gotta do, you gotta call is finished and detect whether you're actually finished or not, right? And here, what I want to do is I want to show you how complicated it could be uh, if you use a different API. You know, the store call was blocking one, but that doesn't apply, I told you before, right? So let's make an asynchronous one, right? Okay, so it goes in this way. Um, while it's ready and it's not finished, go into the store and then we should return from here, right? Store return. So it's not really a while loop, but we store. When we are done, we call again ourselves. Okay, the write is done, then we need to read more. So you gotta call on data available again because the container doesn't. I mean here we go back and it's ready, so the container doesn't call you because it's ready. So we have to call it. But if we do it in this way, remember callback hell? When I, and what is the number one problem with the callbacks? Is stack overflow. Right? So this blows up because this call, this one says, okay, I'm ready, read, store. Oh, I immediately stored, only it available, is ready, read, store, is ready, read, store, is ready, read, store, right? Boom. Okay. So we do have a solution in Jerry. It's a utility class called iterating callback that has born by from the genius of Greg Wilkins that the first time that he committed this class, I looked at the class and I and I, and I thought what the hell is this? And um, it turns out that now we're using it everywhere in the Jerry code base because it's, it's really a piece of genius. It basically converts like a, a callback uh, scheme into an iterative one. And so it's a converter from recursive to iteration, uh, but done in the code. It's not done by compilers or something. We do it in the code and uh, it's really powerful. Last one, I promise you. Uh, any of you have ever used this API request get parameter ID? Like, for example, you get, you know, you make a query where you say path to something question mark ID equal one, right? It's very common. What do you do? You get the parameter ID and you get the ID, and then with the ID, you go to the database, you go to a NoSQL store, whatever, right? So, what is the problem behind this? Well, did you know that get parameter? It's a blocking call that reads the content of your request, post request, right? So this one is a blocking call. Ah, I can't use blocking API with asynchronous AR. So multi-part API as well. You have a new, this new API called get parts when you send a multi-part uh, multi request to the server. And this is also blocking because it reads the content. So what do you have to do here? You have to basically write your own parser for uh, URL encoded post content and multiple content. And uh, write your own readers, asynchronous readers, that read that content in an asynchronous way. Don't worry, don't do it. Um, either frameworks will do it for you or the server API will fix these issues. More fun, you're not supposed to read actually this code. Uh, this one is the number of lines that takes to write an echo servlet. Read from input, write to output, okay? If you remove the boilerplate, here is class definition, method, blah, 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 it's four lines, right? This one is the asynchronous version for the same stuff. It's an echo servlet, but writing asynchronous EO. And I came up with this after like four hours of thinking how to write this guy. Um, while well, this one is like, you, my son, nine years old, can write it, right? Because uh, it's trivial. You read, it's blocking, you write, done. I mean, just test for minus one and you're good to go. This one took me four hours and, um, uh, well. Then Greg Wilkins came along and said, oh, I need to write an echo servlet myself. So he wrote his version of the echo servlet and guess what it was totally different from mine. Because now what you can do is, you, you, can, you can say something like, well, Read until you can, 
and then write. And then can you, did you block writing or some? If you did block, then you don't need to read again, right? So you gotta exit somehow. Or you can do the opposite. You can say, okay, do I have something to write? Yes, can I write? No, you can't, so there's no point in reading. So you can actually reverse the two operations, right? And I imagine there are, you know, there is some fantasy from any other developer to write a different version of it, uh, while the blocking one, there's only one version. You read from the input, you write the output, that's it. So, we're almost at the end. Don't be scared, um, but because it ends well. Um, so, I think I'll echo servlet. You know, it's, it's four, five time more code, but you don't have to judge by that because it's a very simple example. If you, if you actually do things into your servlet, uh, then uh, you're not going to, to pay this much uh, of, a, of a difference in, in code size. Let me finish this with, with this. Um, blocking code has a reason to exist. It is blocking. Our brain reads the code from top to bottom. It is very intuitive, understanding what's going on, and it's very easy, very simple, very powerful model. Okay. Uh, however, so the question that we should ask ourselves is: Okay, why would I want to go asynchronous, right? If it is this complicated, well, the answers are that for a certain class of application that needs high performance. Asynchronous code is the only solution because you can't really afford to block your your whole server just because what well, it happened to me. Let me tell you uh, like a war story. Customer configure the server for hundred threads in the thread pool. Okay, turns out this guy has ten thousand active users at a time, and he just had hundred threads. And uh, what it turns out is that out of those 10,000 users, 100 of those were slow clients from India and all places where the interconnection was not so good. So those guys were actually blocking it, you know, taking all the threads out of the pool. At that point, the server has no thread. So new clients were coming in, and all those threads were blocked, doing nothing, absolutely nothing. They were waiting for the client to send more content or, or to, to write more content to the client. So, we, had, we were in a situation where all the threads were blocked, doing nothing, but we could not serve another request, just because all the threads were out of the pool. So, sorry, uh, server grinded out to a halt. So for certain class of application, asynchronous is the only way to go. Improved scalability, decreased latency, makes you more money. Go out of this session with these two things, okay? This one is the difference that it takes between a synchronous API in the real world here. 600 milliseconds, less than a half, for the same activity. And it's not a trivial one, it's a, it's a request to a, an external REST service, okay? Which is probably common for your use case. Uh, less than a half latency, just going async. Not only that, but out of 279 milliseconds of activity, 278 doing nothing. I mean, the thread is back in the pool. It can do something else, a lot of something else, right? So this is the key to scalability. And the other thing that I want you to get is this. We're going to see this uh, much more tomorrow, but Shopzilla, Amazon.com, America Online, Yahoo, and Mozilla.org all went for reducing the user experience and improving the user experience in a way that the pages load faster. So if you go sync, you get that effect because of this. 279 versus 600, less than half. So imagine if you, if you hear, you get, you know, these examples are taken to an extreme, but if you go there and you go sync, you pay the complexity, but it gives you back big bucks. Thanks. Thank you. I'd like to give this virtual speaker. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. All right, any question? Yes. What's going to happen to the JAX RS standard? I mean, presumably, 
things to be modified to... JaxRS? Yeah. For what I know, JaxRS, and uh, we'll have Masood speaking about this tomorrow, is, is already synchronous. I mean, JaxRS 2.0 is already synchronous. It has a synchronous API on the server and a synchronous API on the client, which is a good thing because you can actually make these asynchronous requests to the server in a non-blocking way. The problem with the client is that the client API for JaxRS, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's based on uh, Java Util Concurrent Future. So the problem is that you make the asynchronous request, and then the only thing that you can do is to call get. And if you call get with a timeout, you're not aborting the request. You have to call, you, you know, you have to try get with a timeout, catch timeout exception, task cancel. If that returns true, you're good. If that returns false, you are in a world of trouble because if you cannot cancel and you got a timeout, what state are you? Uh, is, it, is it because the implementation just is of cancel, does just return false? Or it is because it actually tried to cancel the request but it couldn't because the request already returned? You have no idea. So future API, I'm sorry again, Dougley, it was a bad choice for the JDK. If you, if you see an asynchronous API that uses Java Util Concurrent Future, uh, pay attention, uh, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. It's, unfortunately, it's the wrong solution for, for the problem. It's not working. Um, there was another question? Um, so, don't be scared. This is going to be fixed in server or zero, hopefully. Don't be scared, frameworks will do this for you, okay? You, you, you probably need to write a synchronous service, maybe if you have a use case for that, okay? But who of you writes serverless these days? You don't write serverless anymore, why? Because you use Spring MVC, you know, JSF, components here, components there, you don't write serverless anymore, right? But, um, but the point is that Frameworks implementers will. So for those guys, this API will be critical. So for you as a user, you can ask, hey, Spring, do you use asynchronous AO in Spring MVC or Spring Webflow or stuff like that? You need to be aware of that and ask your provider of libraries, hey, do you use the asynchronous API? Because I really need them. It's like my use case, I really need to scale, right? And if they don't, then file a bug to their project, all right? Say, so use a synchronous API. I don't care. I mean, you're the smart guy. Do it. Uh, learn this API and do it properly. But um, so it is really important for you as a user to, to actually try to push this to open source projects and say, hey, guys, come on, do it, all right? So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.